Hello and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year from wherever you're watching us from today. I hope you've started a new year on a high note. Thank you for tuning. In this video today we're going to be discussing about control surface balancing. So welcome. Control surface balancing. What is it? And uh, how is it done? What is purpose? How is it achieved? So we'll start by what is control surface balancing? Control surface balancing basically by by doing control surface balancing, we are trying to, as you all know, every body that has weight has a center of gravity. And the center of gravity from your physics you recall is the point where all the mass or all the weight of a body appears to act on. So on a control surface, the center of gravity of a control surface is where all the weight of the control surface appear to act on. Now, for a good control surface, for a balanced control surface, this center of gravity has to be either, ne either at, the, at the hinge line or the pivot of the control surface or as close as possible to the hinge line. That is the reason that is control surface balancing, bringing the center of gravity of a control surface as close as possible or at the hinge line of the control surface. When a control, what does this uh, do? Balancing of a control surface assists in moving the control surface. If a control surface is not properly balanced, you'll find that a lot of effort is needed in moving the control surface. So for, for, to remove, to alleviate this problem, a control surface has to be balanced, properly balanced, in order for, on, in order to remove the, or to, to do away with the need to apply a lot of force or effort to move the control surface. That is the reason for control surface balancing. If a control surface is not properly balanced, you will experience vibration and flutter. Flutter is spontaneous uh, oscillation of the control surface which can lead to even failure of the control surface. So to prevent this from happening, a control surface has to be properly balanced. Now we look at the way control surface balancing is achieved or how to balance a control surface. Uh, there are two ways of balancing a control surface. And one is static balancing and two is aerodynamic balancing. We'll start looking at static balancing. Static balancing is basically using a mass or a weight. A weight is installed ahead of the hinge line. As you can see from this diagram, this is the pivot or the hinge line of the control surface. And a mass of weight or a, is a weight is installed ahead of the hinge line. This is the trailing edge of the control surface and this is the leading edge. This weight is installed here and this will alter the position of the center of gravity and bring it and bring the center of gravity as close as possible to the hinge line, there, thereby balancing the control surface. With a, you remember, as we've, we've said, with a properly balanced control surface, less force or less effort is required in moving the control surface. So in static balancing, a weight is installed ahead of the hinge line of the control surface to, put it, to bring it to balance. This cannot be done when the control surface is installed on an aircraft. It has to be removed and it's done in a workshop with special equipments and some special weights that are added on the control surface to bring it to balance. Next, we're looking, we are going to look at the second type of control surface balancing, which is aerodynamic balancing. And in aerodynamic balancing, we're going to be looking at three forms of aerodynamic balancing. So we'll start with this one, which is called horn balancing. Horn balancing, you can see the outer, the outer edge of the control surface extends forward of the hinge line. This is the hinge line, and this is the portion that extends forward. And this is the portion that extends forward at the end of the control surface is what we call a horn. You can see this one goes forward all the way up to the leading edge of the stabilizer. And this one just goes ahead slightly and then back again. Both of them are horn balances. This portion is the one that is called a horn. This is done uh, for the same reason to balance the control panel and to, as to remove the need to use a lot of effort in moving the control surface. From this side view, you can see when the control surface is turned, this is the hinge line. The portion ahead of the control of the hinge line meets airflow that comes on top of the either vertical stabilizer or horizontal stabilizer or um, 
the wing. This airflow, as it reaches and hits this leading edge, it produces some aerodynamic force, which assists in moving the control surface, therefore not needing a lot of effort in moving the control surface. This type of balancing is installed on a Fokker 50. At the radar on top, you can see it. There's a horn protruding forward. It is still installed also on a Cessna 172. And also on an Embraer 120, which I'll show you in, in, in this picture here. You can see this is the elevator of an Embraer 120. At the end here, towards the end, you can see there is a horn incorporated in this design. Let, let us see, let us look at it from a different angle. You see this angle here, the horn is properly seen. It goes from this point, the control surface goes forward and then back again. This is the horn balancing that is done to this control surface. In this particular case, for Embraer 120, is on an elevator to assist in moving the control surface, therefore balancing the control surface. The next form of aerodynamic balancing that we're going to look at is called insert, insert hinge. And this is our control surface here, and this is where it's connected to either the stabilizer or the wing. This is the hinge line of the control surface. This is the portion of the control surface that is extended forward of the hinge line. And uh, on this side view again, when this control surface is turned either up or down or left or right if it's uh, the rudder, this portion which is ahead, this is the hinge line, this portion which is ahead of the hinge line meets airflow from this side and this airflow when it's hit this control surface it assists in turning the control surface again elevating the reason of needing a lot of effort from the pilot to move the control surface. So this is how balancing is achieved on this type of control surface, it is called insert hinge. The next one, and the, which is our last type of form of aerodynamic balancing that we're going to look at, is called balance panel. Balance panel is installed between the control surface, leading edge, and the trailing edge of the fixed surface where it's connected. Maybe the wing, vertical stabilizer, or the horizontal stabilizer. This panel prevents airflow from the bottom side to move or the bottom chamber to move to the top chamber. So when the control surface is displaced in, part in a particular position either to the left or to the right or up and down, the airflow, when uh, there's an increase in velocity of the airflow on top side, there will be a decrease in velocity on top side. And this will cause also a pressure differential where there's an increase in velocity there will be a decrease in pressure in this chamber. And where there is a decrease in velocity, there will be an increase in pressure. And this pressure differential will push, will make the control, the balance will push the balance panel, thereby assisting in moving the control uh, surface to the desired position. If the, the, if the airflow acceleration, if um, the velocity increase happened, was taking place at the bottom side and not at the top side, this chamber will have low pressure and this one will have a higher pressure which will push this balance panel towards the uh, the bot down position and this will enable or will assist in moving this control panel on the top side so this is what we had for you today thank you for tuning in if you haven't subscribed to the channel please don't forget to click the subscription button and also turn on the notification so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. We still appreciate your feedback. As you continue to receive your feedback, we'll continue to improve on our channel. And if you have any content or um, any system that you want us to focus on, don't hesitate to put it on our comments and we'll properly act on it. Thank you.